We focus on the um, trade of illegally harvested um, products. And in the case of Peru, we're focusing on illegal logging and the trade of illegal logging um, in the country, but mostly the one that actually targets international markets. We have been, my presentation was focusing on um, the possibility of um, free trade agreements to be helpful on um, dealing with illegal logging or curbing illegal logging on the producer countries. Um, so we think we have been working on Peru on the context of the Peru US, um, United States free trade agreement that has a um, new tool which is called the forest annex. And the, um, the new um, aspect about it, it is that it has commitments from both countries in terms of um, improving the transparency, the anti-corruption, the participation on the Peruvian forest sector with cooperation from the United States. Um, and the really uh, innovative piece here is that this is not only a declaration, but it also uh, is mandatory. So at the level that um, a violation of these commitments could bring uh, trade sanctions. So this has been very um, useful in our, for our policy work in Peru because it has been bringing um, policy attention, I mean national attention and political will to deal with problems that a few years ago were only concerning people who were really working in the Amazon. Peru is a highly centralized country, and what happens in the rest, I mean, in the Amazon is too far away from Lima, from the capital where all the decisions are being made. So um, having this um, threat of um, affecting a very important trade agreement for the country has been um, maybe the incentive we're missing to pay attention to this um, uh, very important sector, but uh, politically abandoned okay. before. Okay. This moment, it's only Peru and the United States, um, and um, the. It's the, the, the important piece here is also, I mean, not only um, improving um, the Peruvian sector and the transparency in the Peruvian forest sector, but also a very important piece of this is the ban on importing illegally harvested or illegally traded um, products onto the um, consumer country, in this case the United States. Um, but also at this point, um, there's a, a new trade agreement, a regional trade agreement being negotiated called the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And this involves 11 countries um, in the APEC um, um, region. It includes um, the United States, Peru, um, Canada, <clears throat> Mexico, Japan has just been incorporated, and Australia, Brunei, Malaysia, Chile, I mean, it might be leaving some other countries out. But um, it's a very important um, trade agreement. It's focused on trade, again, but it has an environmental chapter. And we're, um, we have been working for the last four years. This has been negotiated for four years now um, to incorporate a legality verification piece, which means to close the markets for illegally harvested or illegally traded um, products. So this means that even if a producer country is doing all that it can to um, control illegal logging, if something comes out, it won't have a market to go in. That's the idea. I mean, that the countries will not allow illegally harvested products in their frontiers. So this is targeting consumer countries to support the efforts that producing countries are already doing. It is, especially because normally the negotiators of these agreements are people focused on trade. So they don't really have their minds on environmental issues. But uh, I think that this is growing. Um, at the beginning of the negotiations four years ago, um, the Lacey Act, which is a, um, um, a law in this sense, was just starting. We didn't have the EUTR yet, I mean, the European Union Timber Regulation, uh, Australia. So this has been growing. Um, it, this is a, a trend in the international um, markets. Um, so at the beginning, people were not understanding what we were talking about. 
but after four years and with all these um, new tools coming into place, um, the last uh, round of negotiations that was in Lima was the 17th round. We were talking with the negotiators and there were at a different stage. At this moment, they're in a stage where they're saying, how would this look like? What would we have to do? So um, I think that this is growing into, into the region. People are understanding that the idea is not to be interventionist. The idea is not to um, force the countries to create new legislation. The idea is just to help the countries who are doing efforts in the field um, to um, um, by not receiving this illegally uh, harvested product. So it's, uh, it's respecting and valuing the, e the efforts that producing countries are already doing and helping them um, not consuming their countries. So this, is a, this has a heavy responsibility on consumer countries and not only the governments but also the people. First, we're, we have been very focused on Peru because of this specific trade agreement that had this new tool. Sure. And to see if this was working. I mean, because we were working with other Peruvian and, and American NGOs on trying to design these new tools. And then we needed to know if this was working. So we ran an investigation in the country, in Peru. We um, activated the mechanisms because we could prove, we could document that there was illegal logging being exported and into the United States. Um, and this has been, this has created mixed reactions from people in the government and in the civil society and in both governments. First, um, it um, implied that people who are normally working on trade issues and who want to facilitate trade had to stop and take a look at something that they didn't understand. I mean, they don't really do a lot about environment. They don't really understand the forest issues. So um, this has been, a painful process for these people, I think. Uh, but on the other hand, I also think that they are starting to acknowledge that um, it's doable. I mean, that there's some ways where they can actually put these different factors in place. It's not that they're all happy. <laughs> and also, um, it's, um, the producer countries still sometimes feel that this is a little interventionist in the sense that it brings, it prioritizes issues that they might not think are a priority for their country. So we're still working on trying to make sure that everybody feels that this is helping because that's the idea and that's the only way that these tools are going to be um, reproduced. And in, in, Latin, in the Latin American region, it's, it would be very important to have a regional agreement that would include one of these tools because we, um, and here talking with people um, from Brazil, from um, Ecuador, Bolivia and Colombia, we know that we have illegal trade going through our frontiers. We don't really understand yet what are the networks and how they're built, but we know that it's happening. And um, I feel that our governments are still not totally prepared to deal with this. And this is a tool that could help. But um, we understand that this is, this is hard and that we have to uh, buy convince people that are not necessarily people coming from environmental um, backgrounds. But, uh, but I think that it's moving there. Climate change campaigns are really starting to bring together people from different sectors in the governments. And I think that that's, that's helping. I mean, I want to be optimist. I don't th I don't, we're still far away. Sure. We're, um, it's hard. It's not easy. But I think we're moving in the right direction. From my very personal point of view and my work right now, this has been great this far because I have been talking to people that are doing um, some people focused again in trade, but also some people focused on more scientific things. And I have been asking people from the <laughs> with a very uh, hard scientific background about um, some things that 
we find in the field and not necessarily know how to deal with. So this has been great for me and for my work in particular in terms of networking and building new connections and also finding new ideas of investigation and work in a, um, to start um, some um, information sharing um, with other colleagues. It, I think this is a very um, productive forum for not only for the scientists but also for people who are working in the field with policy issues, with um, international relations things, with the, from the social um, science.